All right. Hello. So we're going to paint Vulcan. Uh, Primarch of the Salamanders Legion from Forge World. So I started by, um, you guys probably know some of this process at this point, but I started with uh, Zenitho priming. Then I covered him with Chimera Royal Brown to give me a nice reddish brown base coat. And now I'm just using uh, Express Color Copper Brown, which is pretty similar in tone. It's a reddish brown, just to get in some of the recesses that the, the airbrush did not quite cover. Things like between the fingers and some of these really tiny gaps. Um, if you're familiar with the character, you probably know his color scheme is like green and gold, and then he has flame motifs all over him. Um, I went with a reddish brown base coat because it is a contrasting color to green and then he's got all these leather details and uh, lizard hide uh, so it'll work well as a warm shadow color for the green and then I can build up the gold and other elements on top of it But first, I have to make sure I got all the little crevices nice and covered. Mundo Tiri, thanks for the prime. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. I think that will about do it. Everything seems pretty nice and covered. Uh, I also left, well, one, he's separate from his base, right? And then he's got a big cape that's gonna be annoying to uh, paint some of these areas on the back. Like, I, I'm not super worried about like getting this all detailed, but, uh, He, yeah, so, anyways. Hey man, this is for charity, okay? I appreciate the prime, by the way. Or I appreciate the sub, the tier one. Not my fault. Yeah, I painted an orc last week. What do you want from me? This is gross. All right, Black. You're just going to be a jerk. Give me the paint. Okay. How about this one? Uh, I also left his head and a cup, and obviously the base and some other details separate. Uh, let's see. So, we want to paint his skin. So, if you don't know anything about Warhammer, which is totally cool, 
uh, the salamanders have like obsidian black skin, not like not like African skin tone, like literal black skin. So, here's his tiny head, and it's primed black, so it's going to be kind of hard to see. But, uh, we want to build up a tone on his skin. I'm going to use some olive brown. And it turns into, like, quite a grayish, grayish brown tone. Um, I was thinking if maybe I had something that would be e easier to see him on other than a black cork. Maybe if I used a different cork, but, well, we'll just, we'll just do the base coat real quick. Okay, so, uh, I don't want to use, like, blue-grays for this because that'll give him a very unnatural, even though he's got an unnatural skin tone already using a blue gray will be would be even like weirder so we're gonna start with like a we're gonna go more for like a charcoal gray color And I might have to step away here in like a few minutes. My brother-in-law is bringing me something, so. So, well, we got gambler chefs fulfillment updates, GCE. Give me the gist of it. I'm gonna take his head off of this. I'm gonna put it on something a little lighter so that it has some contrast. There we go. That'll help see a little better. I will text my roommate and let him know, but he probably already knows. Uh, well, that's if he has internet. He's up in Maine doing some fishing. I'm excited. I'm excited to play some, some what's it called again. Some Kingdom Death. Some Kingdom Death. Sp spiff. 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 That's what I'm going with. Thanks. Thanks for the phone. Spiffy, maybe? Maybe the one's an eye.
Alright, tiny little head. Okay. So. Now. We're going to add some skin tone to it. Uh, I don't really want pure skin tone. More like a, a light grayish kind of skin tone. Something like a pale skin tone should work well. As if I have like a pale flush here. Yeah. Something like that. I unexplained. Well, if it comes in, you guys want me to paint some some kingdom, some KDM on stream? From the gambler's chest? See? What happens with this? Let's see, it turns very, very grayish. Because this is a, even though it's got some pink in it. We want pretty small highlights to make him look kind of... most ashen looking. Hi, Christian. Okay, so that gets us. Uh, it didn't seem too bad. It, what is it today? It's 86 today? It was a high in 92. So this is 
way too bright at the moment, but we'll start to like blend this together. I'm going to basically apply a glaze of black over over his skin. AC Miniatures, the big raid. Hello. Um, one of the other things I think I want to do to him is give him a, like, kind of glow. Uh, if you know the Abaddon model or how kind of Horus is, he's got a little bit of a, like, glow around his head. I think I might do that with some flame colors, give him some, like, red on his face. He also has red eyes. What are we up to, AC? Hello, everyone that may have been, may or may not be behind an ad right now. Can I blow dry a resin ribbon to heat it up and bend it slightly, or do I have to blow it? No, you could definitely, it, depending on how thin it is, a hair dryer will definitely work. I think that's my brother-in-law. So, I have to step away for a moment to go grab something. So, I'll be literally sorry for jumping away for two seconds when you guys just raided in, but I'll be literally right back. Sorry about that. All right, I'm back. Ba 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 ba. All right, Ericon Bravestorm. Oh, you're the guy who painted the Mephiston for Golden Demon, the mini for Squidmar. Oh, thanks, appreciate that. Uh, DW man, what's that? Seraphon. That's the uh, new guys, the new Seraphon. Okay, so let's take the black, take some of the black. Oh, yeah, I gotta, I'm switching my cell phone. He had to bring me a SIM card. I'm, I'm switching service providers. So I glaze everything with the dark, the mix of the uh, black and olive brown. Hi, Dun Grun Denethor. Um, so this will help kind of unify everything bring back out some of the details, and then we can push some of the lights back in. Now, if I want to do a kind of reddish glow to his skin, right? Some kind of mm, like fire burning from, from around him.
I'm planning to, to not to get too into the weeds, but switching to T-Mobile from Verizon, they have better international plans and uh, Verizon is very expensive when traveling internationally. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to paint some of this dark red from below. And like his cheekbones. On his chin, under his lip, under the nose. under his eyelids or on, like on his brow and then around the side I can put a little more on his ears and temples And then we're going to build that up. Unexplained. Thanks for the prime, man. Appreciate that. TAC. Thanks for the raid, man. Appreciate it. Uh, a curry, 87. Thanks. Scars. Appreciate it. Antifreeze. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the follows. Welcome, welcome. So AC's chat, you guys mostly Warhammer peoples. Or do you like painting other stuff? See, you can see some of the subtle red. Now I got some of that red on there. I'm gonna push that just a little bit more. A lot of this is gonna be uh, like kind of hidden anyways, cause it's like pretty deep on his, the lower part of him. But it adds some extra interest to what would be a kind of boring face otherwise. You guys pick up that that red, the red in the shadows. Okay. 
And now, I'm going to take some of the red and some of the skin tone. This is just to give some extra coverage to the red. They have, like, red eyes. Uh, let me see. His head is very small, so I'm trying to see exactly where that eyeball is. Rrrr. giving him that kind of demonic appearance, but they're weirdly like one of the nicer Space Marine chapters. So anyways, you guys are going to be able to win this miniature and every other Primark miniature painted by some really fantastic painters. Mini Golden Demon winners. Um, you'll be able to win every single Primark. I will post a link to it when uh, when it goes when the auction goes live or raffle, I guess. He's so he's so evil looking, but he's a nice guy. Hi, Reedy. Okay, cool. So now that we got that, we can come back in and start to define some of his features again. Soften some of these, these blends on top. It is a, you buy raffle tickets, you can buy as many raffle tickets as you want, and you win them all. I believe is the way it's going to work. You get all 19 Primark models.
Okay, so just pick out some of the... Now I'm just placing some smaller highlights to, to pick out some of the details. And define the features of his face. Okay. I need to get uh, like these shapes in. This shape right here. And also connect the side of the nose to the bridge. Is some more highlights. Because even though he's supposed to be like super black skin, he will have uh, some shine to his skin, right? So something like that. thing I never I don't know who sculpted these I mean I know someone at Forge World sculpted them but if I had a complaint I would say like it feels like a lot of them have very similar faces and I get their brothers but um
the sculptor. Had a tendency to sculpt all of the faces for Forge World with like kind of the same nose. They all had this very thin nose. Okay, so then you get that little wrinkle under the eye and the nose there. And then just want to make sure we define the brow ridge. Oh, bug. Bug go. Okay. I get that light on his forehead just right. It's important. That's an important part. I define some of his jaw here. A very needs to have that clinched, angry jaw. Yeah. Now we can come back in and just glaze some some black back on.
Oh. Ja. Couple more tiny highlights. See you next time. And then we'll put one little specular shine. Put a couple little, don't want it too crazy, but a couple, you can use like little tiny dots here and there just to. Really make them look shiny. You know, maybe he's a little sweaty. It's hot with all that Prometheum he's spitting, you know? Oh yeah, peace and love, definitely. Kinda wish you didn't have to wash it. I didn't wash it, I just primed, primed right over it. Let's zoom out a little, see how he looks. Thank you. I mean, if you're gonna handle it all the time, maybe it's a good idea to get, to wash off some of the mold release. It did feel slightly, uh, what's it called, but. I mean, once the primer adheres, and if you're using a good primer, uh, it should be fine. I don't know, people say a lot of things. They repeat crap they hear on the internet all the time.
the hobby myths. I don't know. I just, like I said, I just paint right over it and it, and it works fine. As long as the primer adheres, you won't have any problems. All right, let's get a little bit more of that red. You have to thin your paints, you have to do this and that and whatever, it's like... People say a lot of crap. All right, just his teeth now. So the psycho who sculpted this did sculpt his individual teeth. But we don't really want to define those because it'll make them look uh, kind of ridiculous. You can see like there's a little bit there from just the texture of it. I don't want to paint every individual tooth, right? Because it's just going to make them look insane. But, uh, uh do you want to just apply a bit of light to the teeth. Just to give it something. And there we go. I mean, I didn't really do much to his eyes. I just kind of painted them glowing red. Not even really glowing, they're just kind of dots of red to pick them out. 
because I guess that's how their eyes are. But I'll give you, you know, give you an idea. Tiny, tiny, tiny little head. Let's zoom out. You know, all that work. Thanks, Draco. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot different looking at it when you're looking at it like this versus like this, right? Here we'll compare to a, an, an intercessor. I mean, it's pretty much the size of an intercessor head. Maybe a little bigger, but. Cool. Makes sense. E easy. You guys got this. Go go and paint your uh your what's it called? The heads of your space marines. Okay. So now we gotta do this guy. Uh, and I have to remember where all the green goes. I don't know why they, they put so much freaking detail into these things, man. Holy bejesus. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go smoke real quick and then I will, then we'll start working on the green. Yeah, it goes like in between all the little areas because most of his armor is covered in some kind of designs, right? Wait, what is salamander green? Huh? I don't know. Oh, you're asking me what color it is? Like, I don't know. What color the, uh, the heavy metal studio uses? That I cannot answer. I do not know. I don't use Citadel paints. And they like change. Salamanders are sometimes like a lighter green, sometimes they're a darker. In fact, here's a salamander. There's a salamander. They're pretty green. So sometimes they're like painted really green. And then sometimes they paint them like a darker green. salamander here's another salamander see and then depending on the photography you get different looks right so that one looks darker than that one 
but clearly it's just the photography because the iron hand, the whatever he is, iron hand or raven guard or whatever, this guy looks lighter than this guy. So they're, uh, I'm sure they probably look the same in hand. They probably in in person. They're probably extremely similar, but in uh, I mean, photography can change a lot, right? So, uh, let's see. So green. Um, I probably will start with like a dark green, something like this, or maybe even. Uh, let's just grab some of the game color. What do we got? Dark green, sick green, goblin green, jade. That's not good. I don't want that one. Owl. Angel green. So, we've got a few greens here. Dark green might be too dark for what we're going for. So what we're probably gonna do, oops. We'll start with this guy. bit more. This is what? Angel green. We need the brown. Royal Brown from Chimera or Chimera for non-Italians. So the Royal Brown, we can use that to shade the green and create uh, dark green. Because the royal brown has red in it. Alright. I think I'm actually going to need a reference photo of this guy so I can know what parts are actually green and what aren't. He's got he's got too much too much trim and crap for me to know what all is actually green and what's not green. So all of this is green. Except for a little bottom, bottom edge.
Okay, something like that. Mm, while I'm thinking about it, we we'll go ahead and paint in some of this black before I paint the green. That way I don't cover over top of it. A lot of this stuff under here is like completely unseen, kind of pointless to go crazy about getting, but I'm just going to quickly in some of these recesses try and get some black down in there. Okay, I think that's fine. No idea what the bottom of his feet are. You might be th over thinning it. I'm not really thinning mine at all. So here's the thing about you have to thin your paints, right? Uh, no. You do not have to over thin your paints. As long as you apply it in an even layer and let it dry in between, the paint will level and you'll end up with a smooth, even coat. You can get good coverage from, from a thick layer of paint. And it won't obscure details and things like that. the you have to thin your paints thing. Okay. 
is more BS. You're just taking more time, more unnecessary time. So the important part is to make sure you let it dry in between layers. And, and you won't end up with brush strokes and stuff in it. What happens is people overwork it where they apply it and then they go back and like, eh, and they sit there and move it all around and crap. And then you end up with uh, like nasty brush strokes in your paint because what's happening is you're lifting the pigments as it's drying. And then you end up with that like chunky, nasty looking coverage. Okay, even here, look, watch. I'm gonna put one thicker layer right over top of this. Okay. His knee pad's got all this detail on it. And when that dries, even though I put one thick layer, you can see when it's wet, all those little bumps and stuff, all those little bumps and things will still be there. All right, where else is green? So on his shin, there's a whole lot. Uh, okay, all of this under here is green. This is green. Green, green. This is all covered by the cape, so I don't really care. Where else? Where else? Uh, his arms. That's all mostly in shadow. All right. For here, I'm going to go ahead and get the black in here for around his hand. Thor's paw, Thor's paws. Hello, welcome.
Like I said, just do a thick layer. Okay. The only water I'm adding is the little bit that's in my brush when I rinse it out. Right? So, apply the layer, let it dry completely, then if you need, you can apply another layer. MHCP, this is for the Nova Open Charitable Foundation. All right, there's some green in here. It's very difficult to see. I'm gonna get a little bit. Uh, where else does green show up? There's a little bit very deep inside some of these elements. Not too worried about going over some of these parts because I've got to paint the wings like white. And let's see, where else is green? Uh, his arms, these parts of his arms. Part of his glove. I have no idea what this thing is. And then his hands. Okay, he's got some green on his shoulder, and it runs like all through here. And the flame filigree goes on top. So I'm basically just going to paint over top of it, and then later I'll come back and put the flames in. I'm sure his backpack screen also. Mm, sure. Get some there. And where else? Anywhere else? This thing? A little piece right there. That's too far deep, so it can just stay in shadow. And then his hands. See, if this point, if I don't get perfect, like, really perfect coverage in the deepest shadows, right? I don't even care, like, if underneath, that's fine, right? Because I got to cover over it anyways. Or it's just going to stay dark. 
All right, so his this part of his boot, grieve, whatever. Got a whole bunch of green on it. It goes down into the flames again. I uh, don't know where it stopped. Okay, there's where the edge of the flame is. Okay. Now the backpack. Hmm. Yeah, we're just we're just gonna cover some parts, and then later, if we need to change something to. Metallic or whatever, that's fine. But I'm going to assume any big flat parts are green. I guess all this is green up here. Green. Okay, so we got the, our, our dark green. Just one little spot left to cover. All right, now, now that we got that, all right, so you can start to see some of the, uh, the details of the armor now. Now we're going to go in with the, uh, the angel green again and start to build up layers. Okay, we're going to start thinking about where the light is. Where would the light be? Where would the shadows be? All right, so.
Boods? Boods007, hello. Welcome. Okay, All right, so there. Uh, this part's a little tougher because we got the, all the little things in between, so what we're gonna do is just apply a little bit here. We don't need to highlight this too much more than that because this is all basically gonna get shaded anyways because he's got his legion Roman numerals on his on his uh, knee pad there. Here on top of his foot. It was like lightning bolts or something. Maybe they're spears. Okay, so right. So building up, we're just going to keep building up the flame. And if I'm careful with placing the light on top of this, um, I can maintain that dark brown or red as the uh, the dark lining between armor armor panels as I as I start to uh, add the lights up, right? So for his legs, they're cylinders, so the light's going to run in lines. like such how do you paint with red and green and have it not come out like Christmas uh, it's about the intensity of the red and green. Um, you, 
you could either desaturate the red or desaturate the green or you could depending on which green or red you use um, you could use a more like lime green which is uh, doesn't have that Christmas feeling to it To me, this would be like a, a Christmassy green, and if I used like this green and this red together, right, then you, then you're then you might run into that problem. And let me see if I have a figure I can show as an example. It's a figure I have that's red and green. Red green complementaries. I've got this guy. He uses a red green complementary color scheme. Let's zoom out. All right. So he's red and green. Okay, but you wouldn't call him Christmas colors. Right, because I'm not really using that Christmassy green, right? There's nowhere where I'm using that like like pine green. And then the skin Uh, is red, but it's not like a pure red, right? It goes most like a yellow. Even this, the pants have green in it, but they also have blue in the shadows, right? So it's, they're not like, it's not just red and green. There's a lot of other tones happening, okay? Maybe the skin even moves slightly towards an orange. Um, and then like the gauntlet, when I zoom in, now you can see like all the different color in the gauntlet. Right? There is pure like green, but then it goes up to more like yellowish green and then goes even to blue in the shadows. Um, so it's about the balance. Right? Crazy glue. Like, let's look at this bottle of crazy glue. Okay, super glue, red green. But you, this isn't Christmas colors, right? And this goes up to yellow. This is more like a lime green. You wouldn't say this is Christmas colors. You wouldn't even say that's Christmas colors, right? It's about a lot of it comes down to what shade, what shade of red and green you're using.
I'm trying to think of a superhero. Can someone name one? I'm sure there is one. Anybody think of a superhero that uses red green? Well, the original, uh, the original Green Lantern, actually. Uh, not Hal Jordan, but like the Golden Age. How uh, Green Lantern costume was red and green. Can't remember his name. Poison Ivy is red green, yeah. Robin, yeah, that's a good one. Robin's red green. So I think it's, yeah, it's very doable. It's just about controlling the tones and Uh, even if you look at my Mephiston, actually, that I did, he's he's a sort of red green complementary color scheme. He he's a bit more like analogous color scheme, mostly red. But there is uh, some desaturated greens and things, especially in his cloak. It is one of the more difficult uh, complementary color schemes to pull off, but... You can also change it slightly, like change the tonality of the red. So you could do like a magenta green color scheme. Which is, you know, close to a red, but still a complementary color scheme. Can someone name me a magenta green superhero?
I'll take the first one, the, the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, Green Goblin. Comic books love using complementary color schemes. Piccolo, yeah, Piccolo from Dragon Ball. <laughs> He's also got some purple in him, though. His skin is, uh, is, is green magenta. No, Green Lantern didn't have any magenta. The original Green Lantern was red, red green. Red, green, and yellow, if I remember correctly. Had a bit of yellow on him, I think. Yeah, they, that's when they switched them to pretty much just green. That's the, the Hal Jordan design.
However, Sinestro, when he was a Green Lantern, was magenta green. So the magenta falls in between the two. So when he was a yellow lantern, he was still kind of a complementary color scheme because then he became a yellow, yellow purple complementary color scheme by making him his the magenta fall more towards the violet side, right? Magneto is, well, Magneto's had a few costumes, but he is purple and red. He is a analogous color scheme. Hey man, I watched it too. Okay. Uh, Grifter? Is it Grifter? From Wildcats? He's a red-green color scheme, I believe. Is he Wildcats? Or something else. What was the name of that one? It was the, it was the Image Comics uh, Jim Lee team. Hi, Dave. There was two teams. There was that one, and then the one with Chapel. That was the Rob Liefeld comic. I'm almost positive Wildcats was the one with Grifter. That was his name. Young Bloods. Young Blonde. That's the one.
But anyways, my point is you see it come up a lot. I'm sure there's hundreds more that we're not thinking of. It is a fun exercise, though, to try and think of some of the uh, the common color schemes used in comic book characters. Okay, so, bam, first green layer, our first lighter green layer. Let's put a missed one spot. Missed his foot. We are talking comic book characters that use, uh, we were talking ones that use red-green complementary color schemes, but we could talk about any uh, other color schemes. <laughs> that show up commonly in comic book characters. Now we want some of this guy. Escorpina. Verde Escorpina. Scorpion Green. Rafa, yes, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles did use comp uh, red green because the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the comic book all had red bandanas. They only changed it for the TV show so they could more in easily distinguish the characters. No, it was... Raphael was the red in the show, but everyone in the comic book was... Oh, they all wore red bandanas. That might be a little too much of the light of the scorp scorpy green.
Okay. So for an area like this, right, where we've got all this texture on the on the armor, I'm gonna use I'm gonna do little dots, right, to maintain that texture. Help further emphasize it. Now that we're at this point, I think I might work on kind of one leg at a time. So here I want to get that light right there. Uh, and if I want to make his armor look kind of shiny, which I sort of do, I can put a second little reflection right there. He's fancy. He could. He would probably have shinier armor. Okay, something like that and then here we get into the little filigree over here so we need to make sure get some of that outlined I can barely even see it Now, if we want to glaze, we thin it way out. Then we can just kind of blend it together by applying a glaze over top. Now here, I want the line to run like this, right? So I'm painting it as if those little bands and his armor weren't there. Which looks rough at the moment. But 
much. We'll see once I start to blend the two together. Right. Use that as a as a step. And then I can come in with the green. The angel green. Start to create an intermediate between the two. And then again, Now with more of the, the scorpion green. Okay, we can make another line, give it some shine. Be just a little wider. And then I will grab an intermediate again. Thanks, Stigma Boy. Okay. And then gently and a glaze over top. This will just soften everything and kind of unify. And then one last. Layer of the scorpion green. Get a nice shine down the middle of it. Okay. And then even one, I can grab this pale flesh I used before to just lighten this uh, green just a much more uh, I just grabbed some intermediate tone from my palette on somewhere it's hard to say exactly what color I'm using right because I'm always just grabbing mixes I can put a highlight like that. And now with this guy, but probably I'm just going slightly darker on the glaze. And I'm always 
pulling the glaze towards the area where I want to leave the most paint. Right? So then you get a shine like that. Now, it looks kind of weird at the moment because the edge highlighting is what's really going to make that effect sell. So now I have to come in. and around the bottom where the bands are. See? Okay, so when I put in the, the edge, I need Okay, something like that. And then he's got little tiny rivets that I can highlight that are super freaking small. And then for final cleanup step, I can actually grab some of this dark brown. Hi, Dan. Use that to reinforce the dark line. And I get a nice clean separation okay now if the effect is too intense at any point like maybe it's too shiny um, and I want I don't want that center line to be quite so strong I can take some of the scorpion green again and just glaze over top and spread out the uh, the light some more and just brighten the whole thing up a little bit And that's basically the concept. Like I said, at any point, though, well, if you need to make adjustments, it's easy to grab one of your previous layers and just softly go over top of it and it'll make the effect a little more subtle or whatever you need. Maybe you want like a really shiny spot on a few parts.
Uh, this is Vulcan. Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamanders. He is uh, one of the 18 Primarchs that are going to go up for Raffle for Nova Charity. Where did his head go? I painted it earlier. Uh, here's his head. I painted this at the beginning of the stream, in case you missed in case you weren't here. So Anyways, yeah, so we're going going through on him, and uh, yeah, got to paint all the green armor, and then it's a lot other, a lot more other details, uh, flames and leather straps and blah 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 blah, tons of filigree, but if we get the green done first, this is kind of the goal for the green is to get all the armor looking like that which honestly there's more on the back than there is on the front uh flames aren't going to be today probably what we'll do today is just finish working we'll work on a bunch of the green armor and then next week get into painting some more of like the filigree and stuff but i'm gonna go smoke real quick i'll be back in a few minutes all right so let's finish this leg Thanks, Dan, for shouting out the YouTube. Speaking of, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. Pythagosaurus, hello, welcome, thanks for following, by the way, I know I have quite a few new viewers tonight, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to ask.
black armor. Uh, black armor like this. Like black. So black is to achieve a good black. It's all about the percentage of black. It's about the how much mm, shadows to light you have. No, not like that. Okay. Well, anyways, no matter what shade of black you're trying to achieve, it's all about how much dark to light there is. Vandis Stormhammer, hello. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So this is on the bottom. Alright. This part of his leg is facing downward. So what I want to do is I want this part to be darker than the part facing upwards. So I have to glaze some color down to kind of shadow this a bit more. Right, something like that. That old part of his leg is covered by his cape later. So, like so, there's the back of his leg. We'll put one a little bit more highlight down here. Make sure you got a nice point for doing the edge highlights. Okay, something just like that. And then here, where we turn this down. On the edge, I'm just going to put a bit more light just to help those stick out a little bit. A bit more light here. A bit more light there. And then grab some of the the skin tone and to make his boot kind of shiny just along the edge I'm gonna put a few little dots of the green mixed with the pale skin tone Just a few dots like this can be really effective for making something appear really shiny.
Okay. There we go. The green on that leg is done. So now this leg. These are the two biggest parts. Be honest guys like once you start to understand the, the like where lights are placed and how to render the volumes everything the color really doesn't matter you can use whatever colors you want this would be no different than me painting all this with a blue or or whatever With that. Ulrich Ulrich miniatures, hello. Once you start to understand the concepts and everything, then it's just applying it in in different ways, right? Pick, dude, the shop, ta the blue shop towels, game changer. Uh, given I'm already a professional, what do I do to learn and improve? Well, uh, most of what I do, most of what I'm, 
do to improve uh, is study, right? And study is like, I tend to study more uh, traditional painters, okay, like illustrators and and uh, painters I like, or even uh, study like photography. Um, if we want to push the medium of miniature painting, emulating other painters is only going to make you paint like them, right? If you just copy what I'm doing, you're just going to paint like me. But if you want to paint better than me, you have to learn the things I don't know. If I knew what I didn't know, I'd be the wisest person in the world. Uh, favorite painters and illustrators. Uh, my top three. Frank is the goat. Frank Frazetta. Uh, Dan DeSantos. Even though I wouldn't say I paint very much like him, he's uh, one of my favorite fantasy illustrators slash painters. He his uh, control of gray is incredible. One of the things I would like to get better at. Uh, and. Let's see who else. Well, I love Wei Wang. He's like my my style of illustration. But outside of that, uh, you've got Roberto Ferri. Ferri? I don't know how you say it. It's Italian. Roberto Ferri. Uh, careful Googling his work. It's very not safe. Not safe for work. Um, but he's incredible. He's a very... Uh, fantasy style or he has a fantasy subject matter but he paints in like a renaissance slash baroque like kind of period old master style of painting very Caravaggio
But for me, if we want to push past the things we already do in miniature painting, that's what we have to look to, right? And I say this, it's not some big revelation like a lot of miniature painters, like professional miniature painters and beyond study uh, traditional painters' works. I mean, you can look at, like, the work Moses Yao does where he's just painting, like, Julie Bell illustrations and stuff, right? So... There is a lot to learn from from the traditional side. If you want to take miniature painting as an art form, get past the ideas of recipes and things that you would learn from miniature painting tutorials, right? There's a uh, Not a whole lot you're going to get from 20-minute war game. Like, the war gaming tutorials you see on YouTube are fine, okay? But they're not going to make you a better display painter. They might help improve your technique a little bit or something, but... Santos recent Marvel stuff has been pretty great. Lots to learn, even though I'm pretty much over the Marvel hype. I mean, I feel you on that. Any tips for networking within the mini painting sphere? Sure. Attend shows. Go to, go to contests. Talk to people. Pythagosaurus, thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. Um... And there's a huge, huge community outside of the Twitch mini painting world and the YouTube, right? Um, the min Twitch mini painting, like is like weirdly insular. Saying that right?
which I get. Uh, the, now I'm getting into a little rant, but like the YouTube thing, right? Yeah, it's definitely a niche within a niche. It, it, it's YouTube has a bigger reach than than Twitch does. Like Squidmar and gets it's like he's got videos with like a million views that are getting even outside the mini painting like world. My brother saw the Squidmar Fiverr video he did that I'm in. And he had no idea I was in it. And he doesn't pay minis. Um, but there's so much more outside of that. Like, I see the comments on... And there's no jealous... Like, this is... I'm not jealous or anything here. I love email. I love Scott. They're great dudes. Uh, they create what I would call infotainment. Right? Um... But pro the problem with it is, is that's what a lot of uh, painters or new painters or aspiring painters get exposed to, and and they don't know anything else outside of that. So you get like these threads on heavy metal and stuff on Facebook that are like. Who's the best painters? And it's like, Duncan. Duncan's the best. And Duncan's a cool guy, and he's done a lot for the community, but uh, I don't think Duncan Rhodes would tell you he's the best painter. So get out there and attend some shows and meet people and talk to people. There's there's so much so much more out there. I hope that answered your question. I know that was kind of rambling. I hope that made sense. Yeah, workshops are great.
Any tips or advice for painting with the color orange? Hmm. I don't know. I think I'd need a more specific question than that. Yeah, kind of like what Nate's getting at is, is there something you're struggling with when painting orange? Coverage or vibrancy or something. Because that I feel like I could help answer better. If I ever do another custom color, I'm going to call it Blorange. It's just going to be a cyan to complement with the orange. Who made pump skin? Do I have that? I don't think I have that one. The Vinci V in his hobby cheating series.
Vince is another one. And I think he would tell you the same, that like his videos are not like deep dives on art theory or anything, right? They're like short little, exactly what they sound like. They're like hobby tips for beginners. Okay, getting close to where I want to be on, on the leg. I have no idea how much time I'm wasting doing this leg. I think you actually see quite a bit of it. Like it's not till like really around the back that you can't see his leg anymore. Now you're just perpetually confused by higher concepts, right? It's part of the fun, is learning. Okay. Uh, so that's that leg. I need to add. Yeah, I want to add one more little layer of light to this. Self a couple of spots. Who is that? Bad taste aficionado. Hello.
Hi, green. Huh? The leg, leg look nice and shiny. He's a shiny boy. So like, uh, you know, how some of us do coaching, right? Some of the professional, the miniature painting coaches, right? I do it, a uh, few others do it. There's some professional canvas painters, like, I don't know if Patrick Jones does, but there's some others that do it. I wonder how they would react if you were like, I'm going to paint a miniature and I want you, <laughs> right? If you just set the photos, you're like, it's a figure. They couldn't really tell. They should be able to give you the same feedback on it, right? I think it would be interesting to get feedback on a model from a canvas painter. And I know a lot of them would probably be like, this is not my area of expertise, I don't paint miniatures. But if you were like, yeah, don't judge it as if it's a, don't don't judge it if it's look at it as if it's a miniature, look at it as if it's a painting. I wonder what kind of information you could get. Okay, I talked to Daniel Zrum, right? In case you guys don't know who Daniel is, Daniel Zrum did some of our work for Trudvang and pretty Magic the Gathering and some other other stuff. Um, I think it would be interesting to ask him for feedback on a figure. I may ask him one day.
If you're looking for other great illustrators, Daniel's fantastic. You should check him out, too. Zram. Daniel Zram, Z R O M. P -E R O M. Zram. If you find his Instagram, link it in the chat. He's a YouTube too, but it's like kind of time lapse stuff. Uh, Daniel did the Daniel did the original art for this for this guy. Well, it's like a way bigger painting, right? The the full piece is like huge it's much it's the full diorama but uh he did the he did the artwork for this guy uh and it's like whoosh, gigantic but he has the uh the like kind of time lapse painting process of him doing the the original illustration on his youtube channel it's pretty cool Pretty cool. Check him out. Give him a follow. Hi, Robro Cop. How are you? Good. Thank you. Anyways, this all comes kind of comes back to I, I get a lot more uh, inspiration and ideas for miniature painting from traditional painting. Because if you want to stand out as a miniature painter, you've got to do something different, right? If all I did was emulate Lan or Kareel or whoever, I would just be a worse Lan or Kareel or Mark or whoever, right? So you have to... Find your individuality. And I find new new ideas and things from trying to I mean you can take things from from other miniature painters, right? But you have to make it your own and implement it into your own style. Well, Now I want to now I want to implement things from from illustrators styles into my style.
I like that. This part sucks. So tiny. I don't know, what about you guys? You got you guys got any favorite uh favorite traditional artists who I know Dan's got his. I know Dave's got his too. Dave loves Braum. Do, 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 do. All right, what are we at? We're at a little over three hours. Okay. Probably go for another 30 minutes. I think Brum might be one of the most produced in miniature fantasy artists there is. It's not like 
Warhammer, right? And even Warhammer say that, but it's like Warhammer is not really based on specific artwork most of the time. There are a few pieces like uh, the Mephiston and stuff. But the, uh, yeah. It's mostly the other way around where the art is based on the figures. Maybe Paul Bonner. Eh, it might be Paul. It's either Paul or Brom. That's what I'm going with. I'm not a huge fan either. He's good, but he's not my favorite. He has some pieces I really think are pretty great. You know, you don't have to be a fan of someone's entire catalog of work. Sure, I've painted some figures people don't like, and then I've painted some that they do.
All right, we're getting close. We're getting close on the green. I still got to do the backpack, but... that El Tio Mike or I get that right Uncle Mike I'm not familiar Dan Scourge, 1985. Hello. Let me see. Eh, yeah. It's a bit too cutesy for me. Bit too, uh, fairy tale. Like the baby unicorn, the, like the six picture is so cute it makes me sick.
Right, I probably need glasses on to finish those hands. If I want to paint ultra thin lines on the fingers to make the fingers look shiny. But. First time chat from the Ellie Kelly. Think it's time for a shave? You gonna come in here and come at me like that? Huh? Your first time chatting? You come at me like that? How dare you? No. No, I don't. Trim, maybe I would consider it, but a shave, never going to happen. that up. There's that. And then we'll put... There's still some more work to do on the green. Get some more highlights on there. Put some highlight right here. saying
Geen. Hi, Paint Water Sommelier. Do That's covered. See a uh, PhD, ADD. I think that's it. I think that's it for tonight, anyways. Got most of the green done. Still have to do the backpack. But that's majority of the green. Where's his head? So, got Matt and that guy done. Uh, why the deep red base? Um, so a lot of this is going to be uh, brown and golds. Uh, the red also works well as a shadow color for the green. So like in some of these really deep shadow areas, you can see some of that brown still in there because it's contrasting color. It works well as a shadow tone for green. Um, so that's why so it is a universal shadow and I also forgot to paint this part green right here because of course knew it I would knew I would miss somewhere but that's fine I still have to do the backpack uh 